Okay, so this is the key for the sections 1.4 1.6 quiz form B. So you can see the point values here which correspond to what you saw in your comments. Because we're adding 3 to the independent variable, it shifted left 3. Or you can say left 3. And because this is outside, we're shifting the whole thing down, so down 9. Similarly, the x minus 3 causes it to shift right 3. This is a vertical stretch factor 4. Okay. So, same idea, it's up here, except we're shifting at left 7. This is a vertical stretch of factor 1 fourth, or vertical compression of factor 4. Either one would be fine. And here we've dropped it 2, so it's down 2. But you actually need to use these words, right? So then this is left 1, and then reflected over the x-axis. It's not made the opposite, it's actually reflected over the x-axis. So, when you're adding these, it's pretty straightforward. 2x minus 5 plus, well, it doesn't matter about parentheses, so you have an x squared plus 2x, negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. This is where some people got bit. So you're plugging 3 into these equations, 2x plus, 2x minus 5 and x squared minus 1, you're subtracting them, which means 2 times 3, which is 8 minus 5, sorry, 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 5 is 1, minus, order of operations, folks, 3 squared, is 9 minus 1, which is 8. 1 minus 8 is not positive 7, it's negative 7, okay? Um, this is pretty straightforward. You plug g into x, so 2 times what g is, x squared minus 1. Distribute, make sure you're distributing that 2, so it's becomes minus 2, 2x squared minus 7, okay? Now, find the inverse. So uh, these are the correct answers for the inverse uh, process-wise here. You are simply taking 2y plus, I'm sorry, 4y plus 5. You're subtracting 5. Then you're dividing the whole thing by 4. You could split that up, so it's x over 4, 1 fourth x minus 5 fourths. Same idea here. This is linear, believe it or not, because you've got the x in the numerator. So, I would get rid of the 7 first by multiplying, then add 4, pretty straightforward. This last one's a little bit more complicated, like is 2x cubed minus 7, so this becomes x equals 2y cubed minus 7. Remember when you're solving you have to deal with the order of operations backwards, which means the add, minus 7 has to go first. Then you're dividing everything, everything, by 2. That's kind of important. If you want to do 1 half x plus 3.5, that's your business. To undo the um, cube, you have to take the cube root. Cube root. So you end up with a cube root of the x plus 7 over 2. That's how we get our final answer. Right? Now the back, the first one's worth 3. This is worth 5. You got a point for each for the domain and then the proper inverse. So stepwise, first off, x squared plus 2 would be here, right? I'm going to cut off this upper half, so I'm just going to look at this. Now this has to be in terms of the x. This is the point zero 02, that's what a vertex is, but we want it in terms of the x values. So if I cut it off there, it's going to make life easier. Now, this means that I have x equals y squared plus 2, so I subtract 2. Then I take the square root of the whole thing. Now because I've cut, off the f cut it off, so I'm just looking at this, I do not do plus or minus. If I did plus or minus, then I would have a something that's not a function, so that would not be a valid answer. Okay? So just positive of the quantity squared of x minus 2. Same idea here, except this graph has been shifted left 3 and down 2, which means that we've got a quadratic, and it's also been stretched vertically, so it's narrower looking, yeah? So it's been shoot, moved. 3 this way, and then down 2, so it's something like that. So then, uh, that means that this is at negative 3, negative 2. So in terms of the x, I'm just going to cut it off here and go in a positive direction, so that's why it's negative 3 to infinity for the domain. Then, to find the inverse, and this is where a lot of wacky things happened, x equals 4 times quantity y plus 3 squared, minus 2. First thing you need to do is get rid of this minus 2. It's the last thing to happen to the, in this case, y, which is what we're now solving for. Um, and then, 
we get rid of the 4 by dividing and then taking the square root we're slowly peeling away the layers and then we subtract 3 now when we subtract 3 we are taking the square root of x plus 2 over 4 right all of that notice how I've extended that so I'm taking the square root of everything and then I subtract 3 from that whole mess. Notice how I can't insert that 3 magically in there. It's not, not a thing. Uh, a lot of where I saw mistakes were you cannot simply say this is y squared plus 3 squared, then multiply the result by 4. So people did that. Um, and then try to solve it. Uh, I did have some people who distributed this uh, correctly, so it was y plus 3 times y plus 3. The problem with that is then you get y squared plus 9y, 6y plus 9, and then you have two y terms. Leave it alone, just solve it as is, okay? That's it.